2 Kings 24. <clears throat> In his days, King Jehoiakim, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, here it comes. Here comes the destruction of Judah in two parts. Came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. Jehoiakim against Babylon. And the Lord sent against him, Jehoiakim, bands of the Chaldees, bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and set them against Judah to destroy it. Because Judah's been in sin. God has sent prophets. God has sent forth his word. You had Josiah. He was doing right. According to the word of the Lord. Which he spanked by his servants, the prophets. And when you got street preachers all over the world preaching. And you got people knocking on your doors all over the world. And you got people giving out gospel tracts all over the world. And you got people trying to witness, going all the world and preaching the gospel. And then when death and destruction and hell comes upon those people, you were warned. Jehoiakim was warned. And he mocked and had other gods and did evil in the sight of the Lord. So why would a justice God throw a man into hell? God is justice. He, he gave them the prophets. He gave them men to preach the gospel. He gave them the, the word. And what we see, we see rebellion. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah. To remove them out of his sight. For the sin of Manasseh, according to all that he did. And also for the innocent blood, in addition to the sins of Manasseh, and the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. And in the law, and before the law, Noah, coming out of that ark, and in the church age epistles, the blood of a man that's been murdered, there is no pardon except the man that murdered that man's blood be shed. All right, so let's look beyond America. How men who have killed other men in murder are sitting in luxury and have not died. And when they do die, they die of old age. They die of natural causes. And the blood of them people are still crying out. Now, I don't know history too well. I mean, I know history, but there are conspiracy theories and stuff that comes up. But there's one point, no, Adolf Hitler is responsible for the blood of millions, if not billions of Jews during World War II. And I have seen things where he did not die in that bunker. He did not have his body burned. Yay or nay. But there are still blood of Jews in Germany, in Poland, throughout Europe. There are blood of people of murder by Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party throughout England. And God's not going to pardon it unless was not Adolf Hitler a leader of a nation? Was not Manasseh the king of a nation? I told you before when we studied that with Manasseh. All right, he got right. He repented, but he's still alive and he died in a good old age. When it comes to the matter of murder, and people go, well, what about David? The God gave David much distress, much reaping and sowing for that murder that he did of Uriah. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, re reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land. King of Egypt stayed down in Egypt. For the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the river of Egypt. Now, if you look at a map, I have not found this since I went to school. When I was in school, I, I don't know what I did with this map, but the instructor gave us a map. There's a little river down south of Judah. 
that comes off the Mediterranean. It's not the Nile. And there's this little river that comes out. I can't find any maps anywhere now. And that was the river to Egypt. And that would be the most southern border of Judah. Onto the river Euphrates, that's up where Iraq, Babylon, Sodom and Sain, all that pertains to the king of Egypt. So the king of Egypt lost all that land. Judah was under the authority of the king of Egypt. Remember, we read last night in the last chapter, hey, they're giving uh, tribute and taxes to the king of Egypt. He lost it. Now, that land was promised to Israel. I mean, Israel, I mean, Israel and his 12 sons. But they sinned. We are promised as Christians New Jerusalem, but we sin. We will be tried by fire. We will lose crowns and in, in the right to reign. There's a loss. But we're dealing with Israel as a nation, as a group of people in the Old Testament. They're still God's people. But there, I guarantee during this time, I, while we've been reading this, I guarantee there are Jews who love the Lord. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and the there are Jews that love the Lord and doing right. But there are more against God than there are more for God. And Jehoi Chin was 18 years old. That's an interesting number. 18, 666. Six, 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 six plus six plus six, 18. He began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Woohoo! Woo and his mother's name was Nahashta, the daughter of El Nathan, or Nathan, El Nathan. See that L? That's God. Nathan. That's the man that went up, walked up to David and said, Thou art the man. So when it came to a king to be with the sins, Nathan, here's his name again. <laughs> Thou art the sinners. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. According to all that his father had done. Jehoiakim. And at that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem. Now remember, he said he sent his servants Jeremiah. I mean, he was sent to service the prophet. Jeremiah is preaching during all this time. And we'll get more detail in Chronicles. We'll get more detail in Jeremiah. These are the ones here. Hey, you know, Jeremiah wrote a letter and Baruch is here to read it to it. And the king took it and, and cut it with a pen knife and threw it in the fire. This is what's going on right now. Scripture with scripture. And the city was besieged, like Israel was besieged. Remember, they sold an, 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 uh, a, a cup of uh, dove's dung and an ass's head. And you know what Judah didn't learn? She did not learn the sins of her sister Israel. You know what America's not learning? She's not learning the sins of her sister England. With all the things that the Muslims are doing throughout the world. Never mind just England, but throughout the world. And they have a right to say, well, you know, we are at war with it, with Islam. But we can't recognize the enemy that Islam is. Judah cannot recognize what sin is. Judah cannot recognize, hey, these are the same things that Israel did. And where is Israel? They're gone. Nineveh. They're gone into the Syria. They're gone all over places of the world, but they're not no longer home. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and this would be about 590 BC, it's various dates. This is the first deportation. There are two or three of them. The king of Babylon came against the city, and his servants did besiege it, Jerusalem. And Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon. <laughs> Hi, king. And his mother, and his servants, his princes, and his officers. The king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. This may have been the time that Daniel was taken. Those princes. His sons. Either this time or the next time. Next chapter, Lord willing, we'll do. That's when Daniel goes. 
Daniel's living this time. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord. Oh, what was his name? I can't think of the king now. Um, Manasseh's father. Oh. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Remember Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah says, hey, what were these men in? Oh, they're from Babylon, far country. Oh. What you do? What'd you do with it? Oh, I showed them everything. I showed them all the house and treasures of the house of God. I showed them all the treasures of my house. I just here's a shopping list, verse thirteen. So let's go back to that. Let me find it over here. Hezekiah, uh, chapter. He has those words. Oh, it's better good for me. Twenty. 20, 12, all right, let's see, 20 verse, oh, where are you telling, 16, Second Kings 20 verse 16 is happening right now as we're studying, Isaiah, so guess who's walking around right now as we're reading, Isaiah, guess who's walking around as we're reading, Jeremiah, guess who's in Babylon, I don't know if it's the first or second uh, captivity. I just forgot his name. Ezekiel. And there are a bunch of other prophets. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, that's the one in the book of Isaiah, 66 chapters. Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that's in thy house, that which thy fathers had laid up the store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left. Says Lord. Now, that's not our chapter tonight. Lord willing, that's the next chapter we're studying. Half the stuff goes. And of thy sons that shall of thy sons that issue from thee, this is the, the family line of the Jewish kings, Judah, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. They're going to take, uh, is it Jehoiakim or Jehoiah? Jehoi Jehoiachin. Been a lot of kings, but here's that Jehoiachin. He's going to Babylon. Daniel, Meshach, and the goat. They're going to go to Babylon. They'll be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. That's the book of Daniel. Daniel never had any children, according to the Bible. Never got married. Now we don't know if that eunuch was was physical or just a hey, king's order. Because it can be physical. Then said Hezekiah, the Lord said, said unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, It is not good if peace, it, uh, it is not good if peace and truth be in my days. Now that date they have is approximately 713 BC. The the what's written here is 600 BC, 113 years later. Approximately, like I said, these, these dates are very approximate. So here it's happening. Now let me tell you something. All right. And I know when I got saved, I didn't want to go to hell. I feared death. And I was witness. I was told there's a hell. There's only one way out of hell. It's Jesus Christ. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. What keeps me as a Christian? What directs me against a religion? What, why, what is the difference between the God that I serve then the Jesus of Jehovah Witnesses, well, he's God. No, no. Yes, but no. What about the Jesus that came to North America for the more? What's the difference? Well, he didn't come to North America. What about the Jesus of the Catholic Church? I don't eat Jesus. What about the Protestant Jesus? I don't eat Jesus. What is my strength in the God of the Bible that I hold all true through? He's a God of prophecy. Jane Dixon, Nicodemus, I, I met a few people with Nicodemus. They cannot do what God has done. We are looking at a period of 100 years. I'm going by the dates of my Bible, which is probably right. Two plus or minus. 100 years later, Isaiah, man talks. To a king and says, hey, this is what's going to happen. And now we are in chapter 24 and it's happening as we speak. The same Isaiah. What did Isaiah say? 
He said, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. That's impossible. And how many years since Isaiah penned that down until the time that Gabriel shows up to Mary and says, in that womb by the, by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that thing. Shall be conceived, shall be called the Son of God, he shall name us Jesus, for uh, for God is with him. God shall save him. That's prophecy. We read tonight as a family in the Passover. It says, Thou shalt not have a bone of that, that Passover be broken. And the Bible says about Jesus Christ, not a bone wasn't broken. My God defiles religion. Because my God is a God of prophecy. You know how many times the Jehovah Witnesses said that Jesus came and did not? The Mormons teach that we're going to populate outer space. Not the Christian. Jesus said when we die and go to heaven, we're going to be like the angels. We're not given the marriage. We won't have any of those relations anymore. God of prophecy. Because what we studied in chapter 20, in chapter 24, it's coming to pass. What we're going to read in Jeremiah, Lord willing, I don't know how far we get before the Lord comes or death, because we're not going to just do a chapter. I mean, we're stopping and, and studying. We're going to read right now. now. I don't know, but there is a Bible out there, and I don't know if it came James, but... It will give you all the chronicle order of the Bible. Somewhere where we're reading right now, you would have Jeremiah in there too. I, I never looked at the Bibles. So I don't know. I'm going to stay with what I hold the books of the Bible there. But I understand that's what that Bible does. It will bring to you Isaiah, where Isaiah is written about what we're doing right I assume. That's a, probably a good study Bible. If you're into, you want the exact order. But then again, sometimes... In the Bible, you can't figure out. <coughs> Excuse me. So Nebuchadnezzar, verse 11, chapter 24, came. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and the servants did besiege it. And Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, went out with the king of Babylon. He and his mother and his servants, his princes, and his officers, what Isaiah said, the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. He carried out thence from all the treasures of the house of the Lord. There it is. Ooh, look at this. Check this out. See this? See that? That's all going to go. Oh, good. It happened. Not my time. And cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord. So everything that Solomon made in that temple has been broken up. Easy to carry. Easy to, to bring to a pawn shop or whatever they did back then. But it didn't go to the pawn shop. According to the book of Daniel. Let's go to Daniel. I'll show you where this stuff went. Now there's stuff that was not broken up. And Daniel chapter. The big party. Five. Jan Daniel chapter 5. And let's just verses 1. We're in Babylon in Daniel 5. Judah has been, you know, it's gone. Belshazzar, that's the next king after Nebuchadnezzar, the king made a great feast to thousands of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple. There's what we're reading which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and the concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, that which was in Jerusalem, the king and his princes. So there it is. Verse 4, and they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, and blah, 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 blah. There it is. So what things were broken? Maybe like the table, the altars, maybe, but the cups, spoons, and all that. Because guess, guess what's going to happen? Ezra is going to get up a party to come back and build the temple in Jerusalem. And guess what he brings? The stuff being carried out right now. That was called to be the party of Belsizer. 
The stuff that Solomon made that ends up in Babylon in storage it comes back with Ezra. Uh, let's see, maybe we can find that. Ezra. Interesting study. Ezra. 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 Ezra chapter 1. Well, there is a gold in verse 4. I thought it actually mentioned it. 11. Verse 9. This is a number of them, the 30 charges of gold, 1,000 charges of silver, 9 and 20 knives, 30 basins of gold, silver basins, second sort, 410, and other vessels, 1,000. All the vessels of gold and silver, 5,004. There it is. After these things, did Shabazzar bring up with them of the captivity and they were brought up from babylon there it is there it is that's what i'm looking for to jerusalem it's being taken away part of it's being taken away in tonight's study the rest of it will be taken lord willing in chapter 25 it shows up in babylon where they're having that feet god's just saying hey let me let me remind you where this stuff is and ezra gathers it up and he brings it back the Ark of the Covenant, where is that? It's nowhere to be found. That's, I mean, Harrison Ford, I'm sorry, but if you want that Ark of the Covenant, it's in heaven, according to Revelation. Why would you reference it with a Nazi Jew who, I mean, Nazis who are against the Jews? Why would God put that there? So the vessels of gold which Solomon the king of Israel had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. So there it is. Nebuchadnezzar puts it in the storehouse. His son brings it out. And then it's put back away again. Because remember that night, Cyrus comes and destroys Babylon. But God's stuff wasn't destroyed. In verse 14, he carried away all Jerusalem. Well, not really all, because there's going to be another captivity in the next chapter. All the princes and all the mighty men of our, the military men. You can't leave them behind because they might build up their forces. Even a thousand captives and all the craftsmen. That's the first time that word shows up. You're not going to have anybody build any crafts. You're not going to fortify Jerusalem while Babylon's away. And the and smiths, that's the first time that word shows up. That's blacksmiths, that's metalsmiths. You ain't going to make weapons when Babylon goes away. And people say, oh, it, this is where they take your guns and all that. Yeah, okay. That's scripture. <laughs> Put your trust in the Lord. None remain save the poorest. That's the only time that word shows up. Sort of the people to land. People who can't do nothing. That would be your lower class, your homeless, town drunks, lepers. Just keep enough people there so the animals wouldn't overpower the land. The enemy won't come in and overpower the land. Keep enough Babylonians there that, that Egypt won't come up. But all the skill and all the tradesmen and all the military of the Jews. Uh -uh, come on, you're going with me. All the house of the king. You ain't going to set up any kind of rulership but me. And he carried away Jehoiachin to Babylon. And the king's mother and the king's wives, his officers, and the mighty of the land. So you just had to be strong. You had to be muscular. You had to be well known. You were gone. Those carried he into captivity with, from ba Jerusalem to Babylon. Like I said, that could have been Daniel there. All the men of might. That could have been Daniel. Even 7,000 and craftsmen and smiths, 1,000. All that were strong and apt. That's the first time that word show, shows up. 
for war. Even them, the king of Babylon, brought captivity to Babylon. So you're eliminating those who could be troublemakers. Nothing new under the sun. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king instead and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 20 and 1 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Look at that. A wicked king, the end of the kings, and he gets 11 years. Long suffering to God. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. So let's go to chapter 23, verse 31. About this woman, because she shows up again. Jehoahaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamuto, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. So here is brothers in between a couple kings. Here are two brothers serving as kings in Jerusalem. Ezekiel speaks about it. Ezekiel 19.2. Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 2. Again, with scripture, with scripture, it's, it's wonderful. And let me go back to if I can get her name. Have we learned a lot more than just having, let's have a, uh, messages on the gospel and how to be saved every week? Isn't there so much? The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say preach the gospel in the church. It says go to the world and preach the gospel. But it says to us, preach in season, out of season, extort, uh, not extort, uh, exhort, rebuke, teach, edify. So verse 19, verse 2, Ezekiel, and said, what is thy mother? All right, that mother is Hamuto. Okay, watch her. A lioness. That's the only place that word shows up, lioness. She lay down among the lions. She nourished her whelps among young lions. She brought up one of her whelps. It became a young lion and learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. This is Jehoaz. Nations also heard of him. He was taken in their pit. He's gone. And they brought him with chains into the land of Egypt. And we saw that Second Kings twenty three thirty three. And when she saw that her, when she saw that she had waited, and her hope was lost, he's not coming back. Then she took another of her whelps and made him a young lion. She held him, and he went up and down among the lions and became a young lion and learned to catch the prey and devour men. And he knew their desolate place, palaces, and he laid waste their cities. And the land was desolate, and fullness thereof by the noise of his roarings. Then the nations set against him on every side from the provinces, and spread their net over him. And he was taken in their pits. That's what we're reading now. And they put him in ward in chains, and brought him to the king of Babylon, Zedekiah, and brought him unto the holds of his voice, should no more be heard. Upon the mountains of Israel. Look at that. There's history. This woman is likened to a lion. Lioness. Jesus Christ. A lion of the tribe of Judah. That's a cross. You run that to Jesus. But here's a woman. Go back to 2 Kings 24 verse 18. <laughs> Zedekiah, whose name was Mataniah, was 20 and 1 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamadu, that, that other lion cub, the daughter of Jeremiah Libna. Now, it's not the Jeremiah of the Bible. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. And through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem, Judah, until he had cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So not only did he rebel against God, he rebelled against Babylon. And we've got one more chapter in the book of 2 Kings. 
Judah's gone. Next chapter.